all the small parts are built, it's time to start installing them in the board. And that means cutting some holes in the deck. Let's start off with the deck tie downs and vent. The very first thing done was to carefully measure and mark the hole locations on the deck of the board. Each one of these locations is going to get the same size hole, and I plan on using a spiral bit on my trim router with a guide bushing to make the cut. To ensure each fitting fits properly into the deck with no gaps, I made a jig using some plywood, and then put a layer or two of tape around the inside of the guide hole to snug up the fit a little. It's easy to sand just a bit more off later on if the fit is too tight, but a gap is harder to fix. The jig was carefully centered on each mark, propped up with some sticks to keep it stable, and then the whole thing was either taped or clamped down depending on location. Cutting the holes with the router was pretty straightforward at this point. I worked slowly and made sure to start the cut inside the circle and then move outward until the router guide hit the jig before moving around the circle. With all the holes cut out, the board was flipped over in preparation for gluing the fittings in. I made some marks to ensure that the fittings were aligned properly, then proceeded to brush some unthickened epoxy to coat the bare wood, and then mix some thickened epoxy to bond them permanently. Now all the holes are sealed again, and we can move on to the next step of preparing the inside of the deck. Because of the way I stripped the deck, there is a spot of concern when it comes to strength. The problem is that the standing area strips and the surrounding strips are glued end grain to end grain. This does not produce a strong bond, so just to be safe, I added a bit of fiberglass to this area on the underside of the deck for some extra reinforcement. The next task on the list is to add some blocking in the rear of the board to provide some support for the fin box. Once the bottom sheet is attached, I'll cut a slot into these and bond the fin box sides to them. Here I'm epoxying in several pieces and fitting them between the frames. Once the epoxy cured, a fairing board is used to sand the blocks flush with the bottom of the frames. The last part to install on the board was the carrying handle. This one is a bit more tricky because it needs to be mounted as close as possible to the center of gravity of the board so that it balances when being carried to the beach. To find this point, I temporarily attach the bottom sheet, end blocks, and the fin just to get a good approximation of the weight distribution, and then I lifted the board at different locations until I found a point that balanced. I used another plywood jig and the handheld router to cut the hole for the handle I made in the previous video. On the inside, some of the frame needed to be cut away to make space for the box that will seal the handle. I didn't mention this box before because it's just going to be made from some flat panels that are fitted after the handle is epoxied in. Here's the handle being epoxied in using the same method as all the other fittings. And here are a few of the panels I made up for the box. They're made of some leftover strips glued together and fiberglass on both sides. I started by bonding the four sides to the handle block and then trimming and sanding them flush. The top, or actually the bottom, was added last and some fiberglass cloth was used to reinforce the edges. The box isn't terribly pretty, but nobody will ever see it once the bottom sheet is on. The last step to prepare for bonding the bottom sheet was to seal the wood on the inside of the board. It's not absolutely necessary, but if any water ever got inside the board, it would cause problems, so it's cheap insurance against that. I used a combination of epoxy on the cedar parts and varnish on the frames. Okay, now it's finally time to seal this thing up. I recruited a second set of hands for this one, and she's really excited to make an appearance in this video series. The goal for us was to spread a thin coat of epoxy on all of the frame and rail surfaces, and then go back over with some thickened epoxy. Once all of this epoxy was spread, we carefully positioned the bottom sheet and set it down on the frames. I had done a dry run before and marked the proper position of the bottom to help this process along. Clamping the bottom down took a while. I mostly used flat pieces of wood with straps or clamps to pull them tight against the frame and position them over each frame to ensure the whole thing stuck together properly. With the epoxy cured and the clamps removed, I blended the bottom into the rails using a block plane, a fairing board, and finally some sandpaper. Here it is as one piece. Alright, to cut out the fin box, I first mark the center line of the paddleboard, and then mark the two end points where the internal blocking is located. Uh, I did that before I glued the bottom on so I know exactly where it is. And I uh, made some marks where I need to cut, and uh, made this uh, template right here, a router guide to cut a slot in the bottom of the board. I'm just going to line that up, clamp it down, and uh, cut out the slot. That'll be wide enough for the side panels to fit in and also have the proper gap in the center for the, for the fin itself. So here we go.
Okay, it's about time to glue these side plates into the slot that I just cut in the bottom of the board to mount the fin. The way this works is that there's a slot in the top section of the side plate, and there'll be a pin in the bottom of the fin here. That pin is going to slide down and then into this longer slot, and then the front side will come down and there will be a bolt plate and a screw through here that will hold the front edge down and lock it into place. The last major task to do before fiberglassing is to finish off the ends of the board. As you can see, they're just left rough uh, with the intention of adding a block to each end. Now, I made these blocks earlier in the process using the same epoxy as the center strip so that everything matches. And what I'm going to do is um, I've already drawn a rough line where I want the board to end and the block to start. So I'm going to transfer that line to a piece of paper to make a pattern that I can cut this block with the curve. I'll clean up that curve, make it really smooth, and then cut this roughly to the line with a saw. And after that, I will put some sandpaper on the edge of the block and use the block to help bring the curve exactly to the line. That way the block will match the board exactly and I can glue it on without any gaps. Here's the tedious part. As mentioned before, I stuck some adhesive sandpaper to the curved part of the block and carefully sanded side to side until the front of the board matched the nose block. It took a while and my fingers and wrists weren't happy, but it looked good in the end. With the fitment done, the block was bonded into place with epoxy and held temporarily with some tape. In the end, I decided to do the rear block a bit differently. Here's how it was done. So what I've done is made a block that's going to be cut in a crescent shape, and then I'm gonna cut the back of the board off here, uh, cut all this excess off in that crescent shape to match so that I can use some sandpaper on this and sand it off so that it fits perfectly. Once it's glued on, I'm gonna carve the whole thing into a nice round shape to finish off the board. The first step was to roughly cut a nice curve into the block using a bandsaw. To smooth the curve out and remove the bandsaw marks, I ended up making a round sanding fixture and manually sanded the block until it was smooth and square. Have I mentioned that adhesive sandpaper is probably the most useful product for a build like this? It definitely is. Alright, so I have a bit of a challenge here. Because nothing is square at the back of the board, I can't really set up a jig or anything to cut a nice crescent shape into the back here. I used the block that I cut as somewhat of a guide and drew a few guidelines on here to give me a rough idea. And I'm really just going to have to cut it by hand and just eyeball it to get it roughly cut out. With the end of the board roughly the right shape, I spent some time using a rasp and the end block with sandpaper to get the fit just right. It helped to make some pencil marks on the edges of the board, and then sand until all the marks disappeared around the entire opening. At this point, it was just about time to epoxy this thing on, but something didn't look quite right. The end block really needed something to define the transition from board to block, so I ended up adding a thin layer of maple to the block and retuning the fit. This will match the maple stripes on the deck and should tie the whole thing together a bit better. Before overthinking the whole thing and changing my mind again, I epoxy the block in place and put an end to it. After the epoxy cured, it was time to do some trimming and shaping. A saw was used to remove the big chunks, and then a rasp, sander, and fairing board progressively refined the shape until it blended in nicely with the board. I was going for sort of an end grain cutting board look with the end block. It didn't come out quite the way I had pictured it, but it should look good under several coats of varnish. The nose block was shaped using basically the same method as the end block. I spent some extra time making sure the red epoxy part matched the curve of the maple part, and then sanded it to a finer grit to make sure that no scratches would show through in the final finish. Here it is cleaned up and ready for the next step. Speaking of the next step, this board is pretty much ready for fiberglass, and fiberglassing means the board is nearing completion. In the next video, I'll stay up all night applying fiberglass, and then spend many hours smoothing the whole thing in preparation for varnish. It's almost done, so stay tuned.
Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.